Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about asthenospermia. And if you want to find out what that means, because it sounds like a complicated word, please watch the entire video. I'm Dr. Malpani. I'm an IVF specialist and I run Malpani Infertility Clinic in Mumbai. And I've been doing this for the last 30 years along with my wife. Every patient knows that doctors love jargon. We love using complicated, long terms, which patients don't understand. It's not that we can't explain, but it's just so much easier to use long, fancy terms because it shows the patient that, hey, you're talking to an expert. You're talking to someone who spent 10 years becoming an expert in doing IVF. So you're not supposed to understand everything I say. And this is often a technique which doctors use to put patients in their place so that patients don't ask questions or patients feel intimidated or patients feel, well, you know, obviously if this guy knows a word like asthenospermia, he obviously knows everything there is to know and they don't ask questions. Big mistake. Never get bullied. If you cannot understand a word which the doctor is saying, it's the doctor's fault, not yours. You're not meant to be a medical expert, but it is part of the doctor's job to educate and explain to you what he's saying. And there is no term which is so complex that it cannot be explained in simple English. Unless, of course, the doctor is an idiot and doesn't know how to speak properly or explain properly. In which case, that's a red flag and you should change doctors. So, what does the word asthenospermia mean? Now, a good doctor understands that his job is to educate the patient. And remember, that's the word doctor. That's how it's derived. The word dosia actually means to teach. And he will explain to you that this consists of two roots. One is spermia, which obviously refers to sperm. And asthenos means weak, weak sperm. What a weak sperm? Now, sperms, as you all know, have motility, which means they need to swim, which is why they have a head and they've got a little tail, which makes them move so that they can reach the egg and fertilize it. Now, sperms normally, good sperms, are active sperms. They can swim and find their way to the egg. And you want lots of good sperms. And these are called the motile sperms. But obviously, not every sperm is going to be motile. And lots of sperms, even in a healthy, fertile man who's got 15 babies in the bedroom. Uh, fortunately, most men don't have so many babies anymore. But even if they did, often their motility could be extremely poor. And you need to understand the limitation of all this testing. Now, when you say that the man has asthenospermia, which means a lot of his sperms are immotile, you need to understand exactly what that means. The first problem is the lab. Lots of laboratories have no idea how to do a sperm test. The technicians are not qualified. The microscopes are poor quality. They don't have the sperm counting chamber, something so basic, which means they just write any rubbish they like. And in India, though, you can get away with anything. And it's very common to write, yeah, 30% motility, 50% motility without even bothering to check. So that's a big, big problem. Don't just trust the lab because the lab is a computer printout or write something. Strongly suggest if your sperm test report is abnormal, repeat it again from a reliable lab. Don't jump to conclusions and don't allow the doctor to jump to conclusions based on just one report. That's the most important lesson I should give you. That if your report is asthenospermia per motility, please recheck it again. And the second reason you need to recheck it again is because sperm counts and motilities fluctuate all the time, even for fertile men. Which means if your motility is 50%, the next time it could very well be 70% or 30%. So you do not need to panic. Now, if you have persistently poor motility, then how do you interpret that and understand the limitation? No man really cares what his sperm count is and what his motility is. He just wants to know, Doc, can I have a baby with my sperms or not? And the problem is we cannot answer that question. Now, we can answer, yes, if your sperm count is zero or if your sperm motility is zero, you can't have a baby. That's straightforward enough. But most men will not have 0% motility. They will have 10%, 20%, 30%, which is why you need to look at the entire report in context. So you need to look at what the count is. So sometimes even if the motility is poor, but the count is fine, that's sometimes good enough. But much more importantly, you also need to see how long the couple have been trying to have a baby. Because if they've only been trying for six months or whatever else, and the man has poor motility, that doesn't mean that he's infertile. Remember, fertility is the sub-potential of the husband's fertility as well as the wife's fertility. So that even if he has poor fertility because of low motility, his wife's fertility may actually compensate for his poor sperm motility and she'll be able to have babies in the bedroom as well. So again, understand the limitations of sperm motility. 
reports a the lab doesn't do them properly and that these mortality reports will fluctuate even in a healthy man and by itself they will never provide an answer so what are you supposed to do now if your mortality is exceptionally low if it's less than 10% or 20% which means that 80% are immortal then you've definitely got a problem check it again but always remember that a lot of these low mortality problems are not because there's a problem with your sperm but because you've not collected the sperm properly that's something you need to be very careful about. So a lot of people will collect sperm samples in dirty glass bottles or bottles which haven't been cleaned or even worse have been cleaned with soap. Soap will kill the sperms. If you want a sperm with 0% mortality, then just add some soap and all the sperms will be immortal. And trust me, people have actually picked up semen from the floor because some of it spilled out and then put it back in the container. And obviously that sperm mortality was poor. Not because his sperms were immortal, but because he did all these shady things that he was so ashamed he didn't even bother to tell the lab technician, this is what I did. And this is a real life story. Let me tell you that. So the poor mortality could be because you collected in a dirty container or the container had soap or you collected the sample and then put it in the fridge. Sperms are not meant to be put in a fridge and people have actually done that, which will of course cause its own problems. Or You've collected the sperm sample and taken five hours to take it to the lab or the lab technician wasn't available when you gave the sperm sample and he checks it after six hours. So all these things will cause a drop in the motility and the best way to control for all this is to repeat the sperm test from another better quality lab to make sure whether it's a persistent problem or not. Please, if you remember nothing else from this video, always remember, don't jump to conclusions based on one sperm test report. Repeat it again. Suppose your second report again shows that your motility is still only 10%, then you have a problem. Unfortunately, this is not an easily fixable problem. We cannot treat it by doing a varicocele surgery or giving you Clomid or Fertilim or Zevit or Evian. Now, the problem is no patient ever wants to hear the truth and no doctor ever wants to tell you the truth. So they're very happy to pump you with all kinds of stupid medicines and change your diet and eat a healthy diet and your wife will do that and you know we will increase your motility and the reality is if you really have asthenospermia none of these things are help. I'm going to tell you right now you want to waste your money go ahead but please repeat the sperm tests after taking whatever medications you want every three months for example give yourself a therapeutic trial for six months if your wife is young nothing's lost but repeat it from a reliable lab and my prediction is that if you do in fact have asthenospermia nothing is going to affect that poor sperm motility so if you have genuine asthenospermia then your best treatment option is ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection what is called IVF ICSI which means what your sperms are not capable of doing that's again something people don't understand how does it matter if 10% of my sperms are motile and if 90% are motile I require just one sperm to fertilize my wife's eggs and you know why can't that motile sperm fertilize my wife's eggs and a lot of doctors will take advantage of the patient's ignorance and they'll say yeah 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 don't worry we'll wash your sperms in the lab we'll scrub them we'll concentrate the good sperms and then we'll do an IUI rubbish that's not going to work as I tell people in Hindi arm khatte to rasbi khattai nikalne wala hai and if the sperms are functionally incompetent they're not going to be able to fertilize the egg no matter what you do and it's not so much the immortality which matters it's just the fact that the fact that so many of these sperms are immortal means there's a functional defect in sperm production or in spermatogenesis and the sperms which may appear to be motile are not functionally competent and will not be able to fertilize the egg so a lot of these guys will do IVF also and will have total failed fertilization because the sperms are not able to fertilize the egg on their own and that's where ICSI comes in and in ICSI what we do is we take out the eggs the embryologist strips the eggs in the IVF lab, puts them on a micro manipulator, which is a large microscope, holds the eggs, takes a single sperm. And with ICSI, you only need one sperm to fertilize an egg. It needs to be a motile sperm, but you know, if your wife has 12 eggs, all you need is 12 motile sperm. So the embryologist will select a motile sperm, immobilize it, and then inject that sperm inside the egg. And with ICSI, fertilization is guaranteed even if your motility is just one percent so that's the good news we have a solution and if you want to find out more because it is an expensive solution and you need to make sure that you go to the right IVF laboratory which knows how to do ICSI then please go to our website it's www.drmalpani.com there's tons of information on semen analysis asthenospermia how to count motility everything you could possibly know not that we're trying to make you an IVF expert, just trying to make sure that no doctor cheats you or takes you for a ride. And if you still have questions, email me your reports. We have a form on our website called 
a free second opinion form and it is a free second opinion no strings attached and i reply and send me your semen analysis report and i'll give you my opinion and i hope to help you to have a baby and nothing will give me more joy look forward to seeing you at www.drmalpani.com and look forward to seeing you with your baby because we've helped you to get the right treatment for your specific infertility problem